So, have you always lived in Augusta? No, okay. but I've been here 10 years with some time off in between. So, how did you end up living in Augusta? Uh, my dad got a job when I was a junior in high school at um, MCG with the hospital, and so the family moved here and stayed. So, for me, I've always lived in Augusta. I live right up the road, just a few minutes. Um, our family home, we just built it. It's like a single-family home, two-story house, five-bedroom kind of thing. Could you tell me about what kind of home you live in? So, I rent a house. It's a little two-bedroom house, a huge backyard. But, yeah, so just a little small, but nice. So... Have you ever invested in solar either for your rooftop for your home on your property or as part of a business or as part of a program through your unit? No. Okay. Um, could you tell me why you've not adopted solar? Was the decision made for you or did you make it for yourself? Um, I've always rented. I've never owned my own home, so it's kind of a decision that was made for me. Do you think it would be more beneficial if, like, renters offered that for you or... Would, would that be a turn away from renting a house for you? It would not be a turn away. I think if I found a rental property that used solar, that would be the opposite of a turn away. I think that would be something that would attract me okay. to a rental property. So why do you think being a renter means you cannot have solar? Like, say you wanted to go put solar on the rental house. I think I could, um, but I guess it depends on how. I, I don't obviously don't know that much about mm -hmm. how it works. Um, so if it was something that I could take with me and then use at the next property, I probably would. But I would hate to invest a lot of money in a property that I don't own, knowing that I'm only going to be there temporarily. So do you think, say, right in your house, talking to your landlord about them investing into it, do you think that would ever be an option? Um, I could certainly try. I think if it came time to, you know, they need to do some more placements on the roof anyways, that would be great to suggest it to them. That would be a perfect time to suggest right. it, I feel like. <laughs> right. Um, so I'd like to talk a little bit about rooftop solar adoption in general. I'm going to give you a map of the United States. So if you will just put an X or circle where you think rooftop solar is adopted the most in the country. Where I think it's adopted the most, I would say probably California. So what do you think makes that area different from the area we live in? I think... California tends to have very progressive views, especially when it comes to environmental policies. And also, I think I know that taxes in California are really high, but also like gross median income, I think, tends to be pretty high. And so people are more willing to invest in those types of things because I think they have more resources to do so. Okay. So you kind of answered the next question, um, but I'll ask it anyways. What kind of people do you think live in California? Yeah, I think, mo for the most part, I think it's pretty progressive, liberal people um, who are willing to make investments in the planet. Um, why do you think those people in that area have the most solar on their rooftops? Uh, I think because of the ways that the state tends to vote as a whole, and I've noticed that there are trends as far as environmental policies go and what states have already passed measures uh, for different things that support the environment. And so I would think something like solar power, they would be more willing to do as well in addition to having high taxes so they have the money maybe to start initiating some of those policies to do that. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing, but with the state of Georgia. So you can mark wherever you think solar is adopted the most. It can be multiple places or just one place, whatever you think. I would say probably Atlanta, maybe Athens, possibly. Those would be my guesses. So what makes those two areas different from Augusta? Um, I think also, I mean, from my experience, I grew up near Athens, and it's a pretty progressive, liberal place, and it's a college town. And I think with a lot of younger people, it tends to be a little bit easier to get new ideas in place, and people are more willing to change. And then Atlanta is such a big city, and I think you do have more progressive people who are willing to make the investment in the environment. And 
from what I've noticed from Augusta, Augustans tend to be a little bit more old-fashioned and more resistant to change. It's very conservative overall. And so I think people are more hesitant to make that investment. So why do you think people have the most solar on their rooftops? It's kind of... In Atlanta and Athens? Yes. I, I think because there tend to be a higher number of progressive people. And from my experiences, living, working, just spending time there, people seem more willing to change and more willing to make changes to benefit the environment. So you said Athens as a college town. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't think there would be more renters than homeowners in that area? That's true. There probably are more renters. Not to change your view on that, but just... Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's a good point. What about most of your friends in the state of Georgia? Do they have rooftop solar that you know of? I know of a couple in Atlanta who do, uh, but of course I also, most of my friends are pretty young and they're still renting, but I do know a couple homeowners in Atlanta who have rooftop solar panels. Are they like more on the outskirts of Atlanta or like in and in Atlanta? One is in Buckhead and the other I think has a house in Midtown. Okay. Um, so now if you don't mind, we're going to ask a few questions regarding your role of food in your day-to-day life. Um, So, if you will, tell me about your regular day with food and what your meals typically look like. And what your meals typically look like. So, um, during the summer, I tend to cook at home three Mm -hmm. meals a day. Um, I mean, usually stuff that's fairly quick, like eggs or avocado toast. I try to eat pretty healthy. And during the school year, uh, I do a decent bit of meal prepping. I try to meal prep at least breakfast and lunch, but I frequently eat either lunch or dinner out because I'm busy. So for me, when I'm away at college, it's more of going out to eat because it's more convenient and it's just me. Um, But when I'm at home, it's more of trying to eat at the house or Mm -hmm. um, like for dinner, we have a big dinner with the family so it's like our biggest meal of the day I guess you would say right um so could you tell me what your go-to meal is and why for which one like breakfast lunch dinner or what types of things I prepare however you want to take that question however I want to take it if you want to answer both ways that's fine too yeah I think probably dinner because you know I'm home in the evening some that's not always true you know sometimes I get home late and I literally will just eat like two cliff bars and pass out But generally, I think dinner is the main meal. I like to make a lot of things with chicken because it's cheap and fairly healthy. So I'll usually do chicken with vegetables and some kind of starch. So how often do you cook your own meals? I know you kind of said that a minute ago. I would say most of the time. I cook, I would say I cook my own meals at least twice a day, seven days a week. Um, you might be the person I've had that cooks the most actually yeah, really? um so how are you, are you the only person in your house that makes decisions about food purchases for the household so I have a roommate but we tend to cook separately and purchase groceries separately so I guess for my household it's, it's yeah um so how often do you purchase food for your household or yourself Um, So I usually go grocery shopping about once a week, sometimes every week and a half or so. Um, And then, of course, you know, if I've been running short on time that day, I might buy lunch at the school dining hall or, you know, buy fast food dinner on the way home from school or something like that. So paint this picture for me. Let's say you're taking a trip to purchase food. What does that look like? So usually, if I'm going to the grocery store, I like to make a list ahead of time based on what meals I'm going to make for myself that week, because I do like to make as much as I can ahead of time uh, during the weekend when I have a little bit of time. So I usually I make a list, drive there, you know, get what get what I need. Occasionally, some other get, stuff gets thrown in, but I try to go aisle by aisle and be as efficient as possible. If I'm running out of time, usually go somewhere pretty quick and just grab something. Um, So when it comes to feeding yourself, what are some challenges you might face? Or say like you're cooking a meal for some friends or something like that. What would be some challenges you would face? So I think time is always my biggest challenge because I'm super busy. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I like to try and spend as little time as possible (laughs) cooking but still making things that are healthy and reasonably inexpensive because I am on a 
pretty tight budget as a student. Mm-hmm. Timing and money. 